Welcome good people, uh, my name is Joel Collier and today we're going to talk about how to use weighted scores uh, with Amos, the Structural Equation Modeling Software Program. Uh, this is a question I get a lot from my students on, uh, and not necessarily as much my business students as much as my other kind of social science students coming from from other, other areas, especially education and some of the others, is I need to use weighted scores. Uh, and if you're not familiar with, with why we do that, weighted scores are in essence uh, trying to kind of mirror, if you will, some kind of percentage of a kind of a known population uh, in your sample. And so what happens typically is maybe there is some aspect of your sample that is not representative uh, of the known population. So you may have gone through a survey and it was, you know, 80% female, or it was, you know, 80% males, and you're like, well, it's really skewed. And so what I really need to do is use a weighted score. So if there's, it's 80% female, well, I'm going to make the male ones in this sample kind of count more. Uh, or uh, oftentimes you see it a lot in regards to kind of racial uh, imbalance, where there's kind of a known representative uh, of a, a demographic or a minority makeup and a survey is not representing that because maybe a sample's too small and so you're trying to kind of give that group a little bit more weight uh, in the uh, analysis to kind of even that out a little bit and be a little bit more representative so the um, the first thing I want to do is kind of show you a model a little bit and we're going to kind of run through what are some of the issues with using weighted scores in Amos so initially I've just got this full structural model here. Uh, it is uh, adaptive behavior. This came from a restaurant setting. Uh, so did the server adapt the behavior, their behavior uh, and did that lead to kind of customer delight? Uh, and then also I've got this construct called service scape which was kind of landscape which is you know the lighting, the setting, uh, music, all that kind of things kind of contributing to that. Did that contribute to customer delight? And when the customer did experience this delight, were they uh, more likely to spread kind of positive word of mouth? And were they more likely to be tolerant, uh, more tolerant of future failures if they occur? So I got this simple model, but let's say that um, my population uh, or my sample specifically did not represent kind of my population. So let's say I know uh, in my customer base is made up of typically... 30% uh, African-American, let's say 70% Caucasian. But my sample, when you actually sampled those customers, well, it doesn't, you know, accurately represent that kind of known population. So my sample, uh, I, I only got 20% African-Americans and 80% Caucasian. So I'm kind of oversampled in a certain racial demographic and underrepresented in, in another. Well, the first thing I need to do is I need to really kind of figure out how to weight these differently. Uh, in the analysis, well, how do I calculate the weight? So it's it's a real simple formula. You're basically just going to get take a percentage of the known population, and then you're going to divide that by the percentage of the actual sample in the data. So, in our example here, uh, with African Americans, I know well my population is 30, but my sample was really 20%. So 30 divided by 20. So I'm going to actually increase the um, the weight of the score by a measure of kind of 1.5 where on the Caucasian sample I need for it to have kind of a less of an emphasis because it's somewhat kind of oversampled and so now I'm, my, my population is 70 percent but my sample was 80 so in this instance that 0.875 is now going to kind of weaken if you will the responses to that group to kind of balance things out. Now the next thing you do once you kind of figure out what the weight is for your uh, your sample is is in SPSS uh, or your data software program you're going to need to create a column that just simply says weight in there. Uh, you can call it whatever you want, but I just call it weight. So this is the weight that I actually want to uh, have, where each row gets kind of weighted by this column that I'm calling weight here, and I've got it right beside. A column called race to just to make it easier so all of the uh, in the race column all Caucasians were uh, coded as a one all African Americans were coded as a two and so you can see right beside them that I've coded all the uh, in the weight column 
uh, 0.875 for all those uh, in the column with a 1 with a race and all those with 2 got coded with a weight of 1.5. To make it easier you could sort all of these and kind of copy and paste to put that weight column in there. And so initially we've got our columns kind of set up but we have to tell SPSS to actually you know run kind of a weighted analysis. So when you make an analysis moving forward it's going to reflect those weights in that. Well to do that you've got to go up to the um, menu bar, bar at the top and click data and then go down to weighted cases. Uh, so this is going to weight our cases. And so now the default is do not weight cases. Well we want to weight cases and then uh, we're actually going to uh, weight them by that column that I called simply weight. Uh, so that one's in there and then we're going to hit OK and so now any analysis that moves forward is going to be weighted. If uh, you want to unweight the analysis, you have to go back in there again to data and weight cases and then tell it to do not weight cases anymore. Otherwise, it's going to keep weighting those cases you know, for every analysis kind of moving forward. So once you've, uh, you've gone into the SPSS file and now you've put your weight and you've also kind of... Uh, put the an analysis as is to weight all of the cases. You can save that file. I called it simply kind of weighted scores uh, example. And then you can go to, uh, to Amos and pull in that new data file. Well, it should be that easy, but it's not. Uh, so I'll show you kind of what the problem is with Amos when you're using weighted scores. So let's say I go up to uh, my file and I want to specifically bring in that weighted score uh, and hit open well okay I'm getting an error message right off the bat it says Amos will ignore the case weights in the file each case will be given a weight of one this will affect the results of your analysis so basically what Amos says is I'm gonna ignore all these weights that you just put in there in SPSS so kind of one of the things that's really kind of you know initially frustrating is is well how do I use weighted scores in Amos then because it won't even let me bring the data over in a kind of a weighted fashion. Well, you have to have kind of a little bit of a workaround uh, to be honest with you. So one of the things that you can do instead of using the raw data with its weight is we can go back to SPSS. Um, and so now everything in that file right now I still have the weight active so every analysis that I'm going to do is, is going to be reflecting that weight. What, what you need to do is actually get the uh, covariance matrix uh, out of this analysis out of SPSS that is weighted and then what we're going to do is we're going to use that covariance matrix as the input into Amos. Because at that point, it won't recognize that it's weighted because you're going to have to kind of create a new file and create this new kind of covariance matrix in a format that Amos can kind of tell you, they can read, and they can tell you the, the analysis. In one of my previous videos, uh, I talk about specifically of how to use a correlation uh, matrix as input, but it also talks about how to, to do this with a covariance matrix too. So if you're curious about how to do that specifically and use that kind of input uh, instead of the raw data, look for that, uh, that video. But initially, uh, you know, getting the, the data into um, kind of a readable form, you first got to find the covariance matrix and there's a couple ways that you can do this and I wanted to show you what I feel like is an easier way to get the data um, than kind of the traditional way so if we want to get the covariance matrix typically what you'll see is you'll go up to analyze and SPSS and then we'll typically see this kind of correlate and then go to bivariate and then you'll include all your variables over here in the, in the variable list that are in your model and then go, go up to options and then we'll choose means but then we'll also choose cross products but also covariances too so it'll give us the covariance between each one of those alright well that's what we need and then just hit OK now it'll give us the analysis here but the problem is is it's not in a very you know user friendly format right here because it's giving me correlations sum of squares covariances and so it's a huge a matrix right now, but it's 
it's just not easy to see because I got all this other stuff kind of mixed in there with what I, I really just, I'm, I just want the covariances bet uh, between all of those so I can set up my own kind of dedicated little matrix that, for Amos to read. So this is the kind of the traditional way you see kind of correlations uh, kind of coming out uh, and being presented. But there's another way that I want to show you that I feel like is a little bit easier uh, to actually get the info that you want. So we're going to go back to the Analyze menu, and instead of going to Correlate, we're actually going to go down to Scale, and we're going to go to Reliability Analysis. And I know many of you at this point are like, what are we doing? Why are we going into Reliability? So we're not really concerned about the reliability, but it's, we're going to use a function through the Reliability Analysis to give us kind of a pretty nice little matrix that's easy to read. So initially, I'm putting all of my uh, indicator items back in there again. You can see all of, I put them uh, back in the items. And then I'm going to go to statistics. And then I'm going to uh, check this inner item correlations, covariances. I'll check means and variances too. Um, but I'm not, again, I'm not concerned necessarily with the reliability because I put all of the indicators in there. So the reliability is probably going to be all over the board. And it should be. But I'm really doing this because I want uh, to find the covariance matrix in kind of an easy to, to see format. So let's hit OK with that and run the analysis. And so now you can see what it gives us here is this is the correlation matrix, but it only shows me the correlation matrix. You can see the ones down the diagonals and you get kind of a mirror of the results at top and bottom. And now if we scroll down, now we have the covariances. But now it's in a much easier format for me to see and down the diagonal is the variances. Um, but now I can easily see just that covariance uh, across uh, the, the items and indicators. So when I have to kind of recreate this, you know, for Amos to read, it's much easier and I'm less likely to kind of make errors by doing it this way. The, the you know, and this these covariance matrices right now through the analysis is the weighted score covariance matrix. So again, when I recreate it, well, Amos will not know that that's a weighted score when I recreate the uh, covariance matrix as the kind of the input. And then I'll go back into Amos and I'll pull in that file and then it should run with the actual weighted scores instead of just the, uh, the raw data. So that's uh, kind of the quick and dirty of how to use weighted scores. Um, it's a little bit of a workaround uh, because obviously it won't just let you pull in the data straight from SPSS that's already kind of weighted. Um, but, you know, there's another option for you to still find your weighted scores and still get the analysis and still kind of account for that. If you're looking for more information besides uh, just weighted scores, but you're also looking for more information about how to kind of run your analysis of structural paths and even more kind of advanced topics of mediation, moderation, and others, I'd encourage you to check out my book. Um, called Applied Structural Equation Modeling Using uh, Amos. Um, uh, it's a more kind of a step-by-step -step, um, process of showing kind of examples and how to work on and where to, how to get my analysis and how even how to present the analysis uh, kind of moving forward. Uh, but that's all I got this week. Uh, I hope you'll have a, a great day and be safe, good people.